Hi folks, I just want to thank everyone for coming on and looking at the videos that we're doing and for passing on all your positive comments and your feedback. I will be taking that on board most definitely and I'll be looking to answer some of those questions in future videos. Uh, so tonight, uh, what I wanted to cover was an aspect of Aikido that is very much misunderstood, I think, by a lot of people when they see what's going on. But at the same time, quite rightly so, because there is a, a tremendous amount of um, poor partnership that we sometimes see in Aikido. Um, and deep at its core, Aikido is a fundamental agreement between two people that we are this one's going to do the throw, this one's going to receive the technique and they're going to work together to complete the technique and then repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, swap places, keep going. Everyone stays healthy, everyone encourages each other to be sensible about their training. Nobody wants to go home injured. We all understand this. And that's one of the things that is the most uh, unique part about Aikido is this non-competitiveness. And that's also the, the, the thing that puts it into the firing line quite a lot for some of the more aggressively competitive martial arts. Ones that are only competitive and have very little of the traditional aspect there, especially. They find it very easy to, to mock this. But um, what I want to discuss here is we've all had experiences training with a bad uke. Now, in Aikido, we have Nage or Tori, one doing the throw, and Uke, one who receives the throw. So, there is nothing worse than training with a bad Uke. And the art of being an Uke, the one who receives the technique, which is where the word it basically means to receive. You know, Ukemi is the receiving body. So, when you undertake Ukemi, you are receiving the technique and your body is adapting itself to that technique. Now, at the same time, there is a great deal of assumed compliance here in that uke is effectively your rag doll and you throw them about. Now, there are both good and negative practices for how the uke reacts and how they undertake the rukemi at the end of the technique and through the technique. Now, certainly from my perspective, and I came from a karate background where when you practice with partners, you had a an attitude of, if you see an opening, you can take it. Now, at the same time, I do remember my old sensei back then telling me, you train and re sorry, you react the way you train. And that's something that I've always carried through into my Aikido practice, particularly in the club I started out in as a lowly Aikido white belt many years ago. And it was a mixed class, so we trained in Jiu-Jitsu, Aikido Jiu-Jitsu, a little bit of Kobudo at times. Um, they asked me to bring some karate forward for certain lessons because I was a second dan at that point. And everything kind of pulled itself together. But learning to be an uke is a very specific art in itself. It's a skill. However, you often see that skill taken to the ultimate extreme, where the uke's job is to receive the technique, as I've said. The Uki's job is not to complicitly receive the technique, I believe. And I'm not talking about those awkward bampot Uki's you get. <laughs> they don't just like to stand there, locking themselves rigid. Throw me, I dare you. Throw me, do your best. They're doing that out of ego, and they're not doing it out of any desire to help you. More likely to just make a fool of you and to make you look stupid. When what's really happening is they're forgetting that if they're locked like this and it doesn't work, a swift punch in the face brings them straight down to earth quite quickly because they're not in a position to block anything. you know. And uh, henceforth, the whole relationship breaks down and the technique falls apart. They may end up in a melee in the middle of the dojo and it's just not done. So ultimately, those guys win because nobody wants to go into another dojo, come face to face with one of these guys, decide it's not worth attempting the technique that's being shown by the instructor that this guy's taken the proverbial, so you just smack him in the face. It doesn't happen in Aikido. It could happen in other martial arts, but it doesn't happen in Aikido. I've certainly never experienced it. I've wanted to do it, but I've never experienced it. So, um, as I said, Uke is the one who's going to receive this technique. Now, what that means is, in order to receive something, from my perspective, you have to be given it. So, at the same time, the uke cannot receive something that they're staying too far in front of and they've not received it properly if they're too far behind the technique. So what that means is the uke's job is to sense the movement of the technique, keep up with it, then keeping themselves safe, work to attempt a breakfall 
a receiving body, ukemi, from the technique and then everyone gets up safe. Now, Aikido is all about trust. You train with a partner for the first time, you really want to establish what the basic ground rules are for whether or not this person likes to train hard, likes to train soft, likes to train fluid, likes to be stop, start, staccato. You need to take into consideration their skill level, their ability level, their personal way of training. And you've, got, you've only got like 10 seconds to take this all in before you start training. But it's worthwhile asking people, you know, how do you like to train? You know, just because, particularly on open courses, because that's where you're going to meet people from different styles and that's where you're going to necessarily meet people that come together. So when we're looking at this, the uke's job is to receive. Okay, That then means that the uke has to be supremely aware of where their balance is. Now at the same point, the person doing the throw can't just willy-nilly go through the technique and expect their uke to comply. That's not martial arts, that's not Aikido, that's dancing. And I know Dobson wrote the book, It's a Lot Like Dancing, and I appreciate where he's coming from that, you know, but the bottom line is, if that's how you train, that's how you react. And if you think for one minute, if someone attacks you or comes at you even aggressively on the street and you're forced into doing something, that they're going to act exactly the way you've been training, you are wildly deluded. It's not going to happen that way. It's going to be very detrimental and it's going to be very dangerous for you. And that's something that we need to be very aware of in Aikido, is that we work in a complicit training partnership. So it's important that Uke doesn't just receive the technique, but as they're receiving it, is able to analyse it, work their way through it, and show where the faults in your technique lie. So when I'm training with people, what I like to say to them is, let's do the technique. If at any moment I have failed to take your balance, don't be afraid to let me know. Stand up, step away, move back, put in a light punch towards me, make me realise that I'm leaving myself open. Because otherwise, my training methods are false. I'm working under the delusion that everything that I'm doing is correct. When what I actually have is an excellent uke who's keeping up with me in terms of doing the technique, but is not actually telling me when I'm going to be wrong because they're just going with it. So it's but again, I have to stress, it's important that we keep each other safe and that we all train at our own levels, okay? But I feel the Uki's job is to receive the technique from Nagi. So the Uki attempts the attack, and we're going to deal with the main attacks in another video, because first, the Uki has to know how to attack. And invariably, in Aikido, we already know the attack, but I'm sure you've all seen it, where... Even though you know the attack, even though it's coming Shomenuchi to the temple, they'll go, right, I'm going to attack you. Here we go, this this hand, this here, it's going to hit you there. It's, going to, it's coming any minute now, ready? Three, two, it's hitting you here. This hand here, it's going to get you there. Three, two, one. I mean, okay, I would rather they just came at me, <laughs> to be honest. Don't warn me about it and just attack. Because then I get to experience how I react to that. And it all comes down to communication with your partner. And it all comes down to making sure that that clarity of how you want to train comes across. So Uki doesn't just have the, the responsibility of receiving the technique. Invariably, the Uki also has the responsibility of instigating the movement that you're going to react to that they will then receive. So it's much deeper than that. And even from basic katatadori, what I think some folk call it first or second form, you know, gyaku hanmi katatadori, where someone's grabbed your wrist, an uke that hangs on to you, like, I, I, I don't know, a kind of damp squib, wet fish, dead octopus kind of feel. It's extremely creepy and clammy. And there's, there's nothing worse than someone grabbing you and there's nothing there. How are you supposed to work with that? The uke needs to give you the attack. And that doesn't just mean grabbing tight. It may also mean extending through. Now... This then brings us on to another part. Aikido is always put out there. It's constantly advertised as the martial art where you use your opponent's strength against them. You use your opponent's power against them. You cannot do that if your uke does not give you that strength and power. Likewise, if they attack all limp and loose and their hips aren't properly connected to the attack, then they're not making you move accordingly, you're not feeling what that attack's going to feel like, and as a result, 
you're just going through motions and movement and it's all beautiful and fluid and it's lovely and we all get back up and it's fabulous and there's little animals running across the back of the dojo and there's no bloody whites there, you know, singing a wee tune to yourself. It's all gorgeous, but it's completely useless when it comes to the fact that some big hairy guy gets you up against the wall with his hand in your throat. It serves you no good. It's important to practice both sides of the equation. And I don't mean getting the really tense uki who's really resistant. And at the same time, the uki role requires a tremendous amount of understanding. They need to understand the concept of the technique. They need to understand the methodology that's going to be applied to them. They need to understand what you, as the thrower, are going to be attempting to do to their centre of balance and to their body in order to take their movement and turn it into something else. They also need to understand the speed and the timing of the technique so that they can keep up with it. Not get in front of it, not get behind it, but actually keep up with it. And on top of that, they have to make themselves physically realistic enough that what you're experiencing, you're learning from. The uke in Aikido is the core fundamental part of learning. Without the uke, you don't learn. You can follow your instructor's movements, but you're a different body, a different shape, a different size. The person he's training with, he could be six foot training with somebody at six foot. You could be five foot nine training at somebody that's four foot eight. That's a huge difference in height. There could be gender differences, which whether we want to admit it in this day and age or not, are a factor. Most men are physically more stronger than most women. But most women are better at Aikido because they're more connected into the centre of gravity and the hip rotation than most men. They've got to learn that quite hard. You know, and it, it can be very difficult for guys to let go of the strength and work in the movement. You know, there's pros and cons for everything here. So we have to be very aware when we work with, and more importantly, when we become uke, that certainly from my perspective, it's not just about going with the technique. And yet, sadly, that's what it's put out as a lot of the time. You, the uke is the person that gets thrown. They are not. They are the ones who are going to receive. And by receiving that technique, they have the responsibility for ensuring that the person they're training with feels the movement, that they need to adapt to and adjust, they need to keep up with the technique and more importantly, it needs to be realistically effective for the person that you're working with and for yourself and all the while keeping yourself safe. That's why as we go up the grades, you see people getting much better at the Rukemi and all the breakfalls and the landings and everything. Sometimes, and we've all experienced this, you get that white belt and you train with them and you apply shionage and you do the rotation and you turn and you go back and they're standing there looking at you with their arms still out and you're wondering what? And the first thing, always hear this in a lot of dojo, oh, you've not fell right, you've not fallen right, this is what you need to do. Right, now hold on a minute. Why is it the new guy who's attacking you like someone who doesn't know what they're doing isn't doing it right when you're the more experienced one and you should either be guiding them through the uki process, why did they not throw you first? Or, you should be doing your technique correctly, so that when it's applied, they've got no option but to follow the instructions and go with it. You know, and I've been there. I've been the guy standing there, doing the twist, doing the turn, and then some little guy looking at me like, what are you doing with their arm out? Is that meant to do something? And you're scratching your head going, what the hell is that? So it's, uh, we have to be very respectful of this role in Aikido and there has to be a lot of uh, give and take with regards to making sure that people understand the importance of being the uke. When it comes to this symbiotic partnership that we have between nage and uke, then invariably we need to be educated and we need to understand and we need to make sure that the people that we're training with are adequately informed and understand that role. That's why uke is one of the most important roles in Aikido. To be honest, you learn more about the technique being thrown by it, but only when you're in the zone and you're fully switched on as to what's going on in your body. And when you get a few twists and turns on some of the arm movements, for example, iriminage and shihonage, and you feel your centre dropping because you've got a good nage doing the throw, someone who's applying it correctly, and you're allowing yourself to give them just enough resistance that they can turn it back on you, because let's face it, that's what Aikido is supposed to be about, then you really experience the technique from start to finish. 
and you understand what's happened to your body within that motion. But just going with the technique, that's not being a nookie. That's just being complicit. And I'd like to see, and I, particularly when I'm teaching, I like to see everyone working together in that partnership. And if the thrower makes a mistake, make them pay for it. Not in a horrible way. If they let the grip go, stand up, move back, make them aware that their error has cost them the technique. Because in the dojo, that's where we make the mistakes. That's where we're allowed to make the mistakes. And so that when it comes to any application in real life, we know what we've done wrong. We can train that muscle memory. And then hopefully avoid hazardous situations or problems with ourselves as we get out there and things happen. So again, be okay as much as you can. You'll learn more Aikido being thrown than you ever will actually doing it. And you'll learn more about how the technique should feel. But don't be afraid to receive it. That doesn't just mean you take it. There's a big difference between the two. So focus on your training. Learn to be a good okay. Don't just take it. Receive it. And if that means employing feedback to your nagi, so be it. Because you'll both benefit from that in the long term. And Aikido as a whole will benefit from that in the long term. So that's it. That's, I've got more to say on the subject, but I'll capture that in another video later when I start talking about Atemi and training for strikes and things like that. So thank you again for all your feedback. Uh, we really appreciate it. And a big shout out to Duncan at Aikido Silverdale for uh, tapping these up a bit because uh, my tube foo is weak. So uh, everyone stay safe, uh, enjoy your training, and I'll catch up with you in a few days. Cheers.